have to go back to the beginning. Have to go to the Constitution, 1789, Article 2, Section 2, Clause 2. And it says, Shall nominate, and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States. The best way to think about Senate confirmation is through a series of steps. As soon as the nominee is announced, the media attention starts, and outside interest groups get to roll up their sleeves. Step one, paper. The nominees have to fill out a ton of forms before they can get confirmed. Think of it like a job interview on paper. They have to fill out a White House questionnaire, pass an FBI background check, and fill out a financial disclosure form. They wanna know every speech you gave, every club you're in. Step number two, the photo op. Here's where you get to make your debut as the nominee. When I called you, you were all the <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you pulled over. Step three, the hearings. Remember Surprise. Clarence Thomas? This is a circus. The nominee is on the hot seat for hours. Once the hearing is over, those same senators are gonna take a vote in committee. And if a nominee can get through committee, then they go to the floor for a full vote of all 100 senators. Senator, the, uh, I enter a motion to reconsider the vote by which cloture was not invoked on this nomination. So how many votes do you need to get officially confirmed? 51 is all it takes. Supreme Court, though, is different. You still need 60. Senate confirmation hasn't always been that easy. I take this obligation freely. Dick Cheney was President George H.W. Bush's second pick for defense secretary. Bush's original pick was former Senator John Tower of Texas, but the Senate rejected his nomination in 1989. At least now you know how they work.